All right. Good morning. Well, uh, maybe I should say good evening because that's uh, where we're at. So we're, we're here on, on Friday night, which is a little different. We did it on Saturday last week, but we uh, recognize that there's an order for us to kind of all be separate as of tonight. So we wanted to uh, be in good standing here and do things uh, the legit way. So we're, uh, we're here on Friday night to record this. Uh, one of the things that uh, sneaks into my mind is just the whole nature of... Uh, a Jewish Sabbath, which officially begins Friday at sundown and goes to Saturday at sundown. And uh, it is, uh, I'm living in that moment of like a day's worth of work and all of a sudden you're just kind of trying to kind of calm down and enter into God's presence. And uh, it is a, good, a great way to start a weekend to be, uh, to be mindful of that and thoughtful of that. So uh, whenever you have a chance to watch this, whether it be on Saturday or Sunday, I hope that uh, it is a, a chance to be in the sanctuary of God. Uh, and a chance to be reminded of some great promises that he has for us. And so, welcome. We're glad that you're here. Glad that you could join us. Uh, a few announcements that I'd like to make uh, before we get started. One, uh, revolving around the issue of prayer requests. Um, it's one of the things that uh, people have asked about, and uh, I appreciate that people care about that issue. But one of the things I don't want to do is uh, broadcast this out in the in this same way so including it as part of our service is probably not the way we're going to go about doing it but what we'd really love to do is for you to send your prayer request to either your group leader or to kathleen the email that's available here at church and if you could do that by wednesday night um, and then on thursday morning when she comes into work she'll uh, put those prayer requests together and send them out as the email that she tends to send out uh, towards the end of the week and that'll be our way to communicate with each other and for you to get a written list. If you know anybody who doesn't get email or doesn't uh, respond that way, uh, like my wife, uh, then uh, let us know because there might be some seniors who, uh, who don't respond that way but still would like to be in touch. And so we'll, we'll have to solve that problem as well. Uh, we're going to have a, a Zoom conference call on Sunday night, if you're aware of that. Uh, Zoom is a, uh, a product that allows for teleconferencing, and so at 6 o'clock... Uh, this Sunday night, we'll uh, gather together for, for that kind of moment. Uh, if you don't know anything about Zoom, then uh, you can go online and find that. I did notice today that one of the things that Zoom is threatening, is because everybody's using it, is that if, uh, if we're going to use the basic pass package, which is free, uh, they're going to start demanding that people use a computer to run that from. And so that might be one of the things, if you are running it from a phone um, in the upcoming weeks, that might be a difficulty. So if you uh, would like to be a part of that uh, conference call, it's just a chance for us to get together and see each other's face uh, and talk about what God's up to in our week. Uh, that'd be a great connection point. And uh, using Zoom might be a great thing for the future as well, for small groups, for uh, even sometimes business meetings and things when people can't be around. It is an opportunity for us to gather when we can't gather. So we're getting used to that. And then finally, the whole nature of online giving and uh, giving through church. I uh, appreciate uh, the uh, efforts that were made for people to give online and also for people to give checks. Um, the, uh, the needs of the ministry continue on even though we're not uh, together. So let me, uh, let me turn it over to the crew. And we're going to sing some uh, good old hymns of the faith. So uh, calm down, rejoice, live in a moment of uh, celebrating a God that we know and love. Well, it's good to be with you. And I know that through this past week, you've been keeping in touch with one another and sharing uh, prayer requests, needs that you might have, and so on. But one of the things that uh, I was sent this week, it came from Mark Wolkoyak. He sent me a song to the guys that are in the uh, men's Bible study, and I like the song so much that I shared it with my mom and dad, and I read it to them the, the other day. And I'd like to, before we sing this uh, song, to share just a few verses of Psalm 91 with you. And it says, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely he will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. And he will cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You may need a refuge today. Things might not have been going real good 
this week. So we want to share a song with you that was written by Melissa Brady, and it's a song that we've sang before with you. It's called All Is Well.
As we uh, want to stop for a moment and want to thank all of you who have taken the opportunity and used the bank home application and uh, sent in your tithing that way and also those who have been sending it in by mail. It's uh, greatly appreciated and as we uh, continue to try to keep things moving in, in uh, God's church here, uh, we just uh, want to encourage you to be able to use that app or to send your tithes in uh, to our address here on Dickerman Road. We're going to stop now and we're going to Let's pray together, and we're going to pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Well, this room is a little bit more of an echo chamber than we, than we would like on some days, but uh, when, when you get a group of people singing in here, it actually sounds pretty good, so that was, uh, that was fun. If you want to uh, turn with me to 1 Peter chapter 4, that's where we're going to find ourselves this week as we've gone through the uh, the book of First Peter and uh, found some opportunities to uh, to think about what it uh, looks like to uh, to live in a, in a world that's a little bit different. So uh, before I, you know, usually we read the text and we live in some kind of moment of uh, going through it uh, verse by verse and all that kind of thing, but one of the things that I, I wanted to do today a little bit different is uh, it, it feels like... Uh, uh, if we do that today, we're going to immerse ourselves into something that feels a little bit different than if we would kind of take the overall view of the whole thing and try to try to get some things figured out. So I would, really would like to uh, to drill down into the details uh, as we go through it, but I'd like to kind of grab the big picture first of all. So uh, the first of all, the, the big picture is is really kind of the, the issue of life. Um, when when life is easy for us, we um, we live under what people call the tyranny of the urgent, right? We have uh, things to do. We're not thinking exactly what we're going to do, but whatever urgent thing happens, we got to react to that. And then we react to the next urgent thing and the next urgent thing. It's the old, the squeaky wheel gets the grease kind of mentality. And when life is going pretty easy, that's, that system works pretty well for us. Um, some could argue that. Uh, but uh, it, it's kind of one of the ways uh, we bounce around in life. Um, but when times get difficult, there begins to be a little bit of a, uh, um, more of a urgency to see the decisions that I need to make and the decisions that I don't need to make. Uh, and, and life, our path gets a little bit more defined. And sometimes that's a good thing because the path is more defined. It's not just bouncing around from one urgent thing to the next, uh, but it really is the, uh, the notion of thinking about the things that we need uh, to do. But one of the problems with uh, the kind of the nature of humanity is that when we're under stress, uh, when we're under some anxious moments, when we live in fear, we tend to revert back to old ways. Uh, and that reversion back to old ways comes in a lot of different ways. But uh, one of the things that we really long for is just, I, I just want some comfort. I just want some peace, right? I mean, the, the songs that even have those kinds of lyrics. Uh, and what does it mean to look for some peace and to look for some comfort and to feel good and to feel okay when everything around me doesn't feel okay? And those issues tend to, for all of us, live in some um, things that aren't healthy for us, right? And so we, uh, we can fall into some, some bad paths that we've gone down before um, when we needed some comfort. And those paths uh, you know, revolve around eating, drinking, spending, gambling, medicating ourselves. Uh, working too much, avoiding work, sexual issues, self selfishness, all kinds of things that, that come up when all of a sudden life is a little bit difficult for us. And uh, what we have used to mask the pain in the past is going to be the thing that we're going to rush to when, when we have some pain in the future. And so when Peter writes this text, it's very much your typical text of... Um, kind of here's the bad list of things not to do and here's the good list of things that you should do and and we can re really easily just kind of like jump into this whole discussion of well that's bad don't do it that's good do that 
But I would really love to frame it more in, in the kind of reality that when life gets tough for us, we have a tendency to go back to old things. And uh, I would love for you and I, uh, instead of just reading a list and saying, well, I don't do that, I don't do that, I don't do that, I would love for you and I to think about when, when life gets pressure packed for me, and when things begin to be overwhelming for me, what is, what's my go-to thing to, uh, to gain some comfort? Because really, that's, that's really one of the issues. And I'm, and I'm telling you, you know, here in advance of, of life being a little bit difficult, is that you and I are going to push back into some of those old cow paths, those old well-worn paths that we've uh, walked on over and over and over again when life gets difficult and when things um, are overwhelming to us. And so I would love, you know, think about this kind of list that Peter's, Throwing out here for people, um, just just a reminder uh, for those of you that have been with us, and for those of you that haven't been with us. Uh, Peter is writing this letter. Uh, it's one of the first moments of church persecution that's uh, been around for the early church, and so he's writing this letter to a bunch of people who are, who were kind of under the radar with their faith, and now all of a sudden, I mean, you could die for your faith. And so what is that going to do to you? It's going to definitely push you back into things of old. And so Peter kind of comes up with this list, uh, kind of the, the, the bad and the good. So let me read through it, and then we'll kind of walk through it. Uh, it says, Therefore, since Christ suffered in his body, arm yourselves also with the same attitude, because whoever suffers in the body is finished with sin. As a result, they do not live the rest of their earthly lives for human desires, but rather for the will of God. For you have spent enough time in the past doing what pagans chose to do. See, you've worn that old path. You've lived in that old path. You've walked this old path. Here's what you used to do. You used to live in debauchery, in lust, and drunkenness, and or orgies, carousing, and detestable idolatry. They are surprised that you do not join them in their reckless, wild living, and they heap abuse on you. But they will have to give an account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. For this is the reason the gospel was preached, even to those who are now dead, so that they might be judged according to human standards in regard to the body, but live according to God in regard to the spirit. So that's kind of the, that's that, that negative stuff. Here's, here's kind of, remember the stuff that you used to live in? Uh, you were saved out of that. These are all the things that you used, used to do. Uh, and so in the middle of that, he's trying to put forth something. Here's what you should be looking towards. And I, I uh, urge us as a body to live in some moments of like, what's the good thing that God's wanting to push me towards? In the middle of life being chaotic, all I want is something that makes me feel good. Some mac and cheese and some meatloaf. Right? Something that just, that, that just makes me feel good. Um, but, but oftentimes God puts us in these uncomfortable positions to get us to be in a new place. And here's the new place uh, that God wants us to be. Here's the vision that Peter lays out for his people and uh, the one that I'd love to give to you here this morning, evening, whatever it is. Uh, the end of all things is near. Therefore, here's what should be happening in your mind. You should be alert. And you should have a sober mind that you, so that you can pray. Above all, love each other deeply. Because love covers over a multitude of sins. Offer hospitality to the one, one, to one another without grumbling. Each of you should use whatever gift you have to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength that God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. It's quite a list. And it certainly uh, captures our attention in the, in the, in the middle of uh, living in some moment of like, uh, you know, what am I worried about and what am I not wanting to do? Uh, I, I love that Peter lays this out for you. You guys are living under some oppression from a, uh, an emperor who burns people at the stake for what you believe. And it's so easy to get your mind uh, caught on that and fixed on that and uh, play it safe and not to go out and make sure that you don't say anything to anybody because you don't want to be the one who uh, ends up like old so-and-so. 
But to just live in that moment of like, here's all the things you shouldn't do. Remember to not do these things. Here's the, here's the list, the things of what you should do. And what a great gift that is for us to, uh, to think about what we should do. And verses 1 and 2 talks about uh, death and, uh, death and resurrection. <laughs> death and resurrection. There we go. Um, since Verse 2 especially is where I was going with this. They, they do not live life for the rest of their earthly lives for human desires, uh, but rather for the will of God. And that's really, you know, that's really that question to me. Do I live in a moment of like my earthly desires or do I live in a moment like I want to do what God's will is? What's God's will for my life today is a lot different than what fearful things should I be worrying about today and what kind of passion should I fulfill because I'm worried about whether tomorrow even exists or not. What does God want me to do today? It's a different question. Isaiah 26, 8, I've thrown this out before. Uh, yes, Lord, we walk in your ways because your ways... Uh, your name and your fame is the desire of my heart. God's name and God's uh, glory is the desire of my heart. More than anything else, that's what the desire of my heart is. And when you're worried about whether you're going to get sick and die, maybe you're not focused so much on the fact that I want to give God glory with my life. And what does that look like today? The cool thing about social networking in our day and age is that we can be salt and light without uh, being close to each other. What a cool thing to, uh, to use some of our social spaces to be in to uh, um, project hope and project life and project good things that, uh, that God wants to do. Uh, verses 3 through 6 give us your, your typical list uh, of human standards versus God's standards. There's these old things that you used to do. And instead of just diving into that list and, and having you and I check off you know, the things that we maybe struggle with or don't struggle with, I'd rather really just cut to the chase and ask you, you guys are going to all say it out loud. What's the thing you struggle with when life gets difficult? Yell it out. Just kidding. You don't have to do that. I would love for you to, to, to take stock of yourself and know exactly. When I face difficulty, here's the thing that I have problems with. I have problems with three things. I'm not telling you what they are. But uh, I know full well that in the middle of my heart hurting a little bit or my heart being fearful or, or, or filled with anxiety, there's three things I know uh, that the, the evil one tempts me with to get me back on an old path that I used to walk on that doesn't bring me life. And I know for you, because you're part of the human race along with me, is that there's something that is... Uh, a way that you used to walk, a way that you used to think, a way that you used to, to be before you were um, walking with the Lord. And those things are tempting to, to press back into. And I, I'm urging you and asking you to think about it and know about this in advance so that when, when those things begin to pile up and come your way, you're not caught off guard. Like, where is this coming from? It's like, well, um, it's predictable. It's as old as time. God doesn't want us to revert back to those old things. Years ago, I was, uh, I was snowshoeing to church. <clears throat> uh, I, I lived at the bottom of Northland Country Club, and the church that I worked at was at the top of Northland Country Club, and I could snowshoe to work every single day, and it was, it was fun. I lost a lot of weight. It was a uh, good exercise. Uh, but every single day, there was this challenge, like, do I want to walk in a new path, or do I want to walk in an old path? Because if I walk in an old path, it's a whole lot easier. It's a whole lot easier to walk in an old path than it is to break a new trail. Uh, and on days when I was, uh, had some energy and was enthusiastic, I'd break a new trail. Like, we're going to do something new today. But on days when I was tired and worn out, I would follow that old trail uh, just because it was easy. And uh, it, it, when we get ourselves in moments when we're overwhelmed, we live in that moment of, I just want something that's easy. And it won't bring you life. I challenge you to, to break off into a new trail. And it's not an unknown trail. Because Peter does a great job of expressing exactly what that trail is. And so here's the new map. There's uh, one, two, three, four, five. Sorry, it's supposed to be three points in a poem, but I got five points in no poem, so you'll be, you'll be okay. Um, five things. It says, the end of all things is near. There, therefore, be alert and sober mind so that you may... Anyone? Pray. Yeah. Uh, um... 
Be sober-minded so that you may pray. Uh, to bring God into the issue. Whenever I get myself overwhelmed in life, my knee-jerk reaction shouldn't be lament. It shouldn't be whining. It shouldn't be, uh, you know, whatever I do. Uh, it should be pray. To, to live in a moment of like, Lord, I need you for something. Could you help me with this? And so that's the, the first step is to pray. Uh, Moving on, says, uh, the second one is, above all, love each other deeply because love covers over a multitude of sins. Selfless service, a choice to love someone, the kind of love that uh, is spoken about in 1 Corinthians, a kind of love that is, a, is, a, is an active choice to do this thing or that thing. Uh, one of the things that I've encouraged people to do, uh, especially within our church body and with your, with your groups that we've kind of assigned, if, if God lays on your heart a name of someone to call, I want you to call that person that day. And I want you to say, hey, I'm praying for you. Is there anything that I can do for you? I want you to live in that moment of like when someone brings, when God brings a name to my attention, I'm going to love them and I'm going to live in some moment of selfless service to them. Okay. Uh, the next one is hospitality. It says, verse nine says, offer hospitality to uh, one another without grumbling. I know hospitality is an interesting word. Hospitality oftentimes I think is, uh, you know, we kind of like, when you think of someone who's like good at hospitality, you think of someone who's good at making sweet tea, uh, someone who knows how to make a nice snack, someone who puts up a little bit of extra decoration uh, whenever there's kind of a thing. Uh, it, it's kind of one of those moments uh, where hospitality gets kind of a lame understanding of what it really is to be hospitable. And so uh, in this book called Henry Nowen, he, uh, he kind of speaks about this issue of what true hospitality is, and so I'd love to read this to you. It says this, in our world full of strangers, estranged from their own past, from their own culture, from country, from their neighbors, from their friends and family, from their deepest self and their God, we witness a painful search for a hospitable place where life could be lived without fear and where community can be found. And although many we might even say most strangers in the world become easily the victim of fearful hostility. It's possible for men and women and obligatory for Christians to offer an open and hospitable place where strangers can cast off their strangeness and become our fellow human beings. Now, some people have a hard time casting off their strangeness, if you know what I mean. This is a joke. <laughs> No, but, but, you know, the, the cast off your strangeness and to be welcomed in, to become one of our fellow human beings, right? Um, this, this is one of these moments where we, when we uh, live in our interactions with people, um, we try to find people who are like us. Because it's easier to talk to them, it's easier to, to understand their frame of mind. Uh, when we come, with, come across someone who's got a different frame of mind, it, it's kind of, you're always trying to figure things out. And if you're always trying to figure things out, then you feel uncomfortable. And generally, you make them feel uncomfortable as well. But society seems to be increasingly full of fearful, defensive, aggressive people, anxiously clinging to their property and inclined to look at their surrounding world with a suspicion always expecting an enemy to suddenly appear and intrude and do harm. But still, there is, this is our vocation, to convert hostis into hospice. Now, Henry now he's famous for taking Latin words and trying to go from this to that. So he's uh, converting hostis, which is uh, Latin for hostility, and turn it into hospice, which is this caregiving, nurturing, welcoming um, kind of a deal. Uh, the enemy into a guest and create a free and fearless place where brotherhood and sisterhood can be formed and fully experienced. That's the nature of hospitality is truly welcome, welcoming people. Um, and so here's, here's just one more little uh, half a paragraph. It says this. Hospitality, therefore, means primarily the creation of a free space where the stranger can enter and become a friend instead of an enemy. When you think about the people who are maybe outside of your circles, it's always easy to be hospitable to the people that we already kind of have in our circles. But let me read that again. And I want you to think about the person who stands outside of your normal circle. It says, hospitality means primarily the creation of a free space where the stranger can enter and become a friend instead of an enemy. Hospitality is not to change people, but to offer them a space where change can take place. And that gets back to that quote from uh, Rich Mullins that I've used, that uh, 
we, we hear that God called us to be lovers, and so we think God's called us to be saviors. So we love people as long as we change them, but if they don't go along with the program, then we begin to resent them, which really is proof that we never really loved them at all. Hospitality is not to change people, but to offer them a space where change can take place. And so that's the hospitality that it speaks of here uh, when he's asking us to, to offer that kind of hospitality. I encourage you to think about the, the friendships and the relationships that you are distant from right now for a moment and to figure out as we re-enter those friendships and those engagements how much hospitality uh, we're offering. And I think that would be a great line of thought for some time before we get back together. The, uh, the last one here is to serve others, and it, and it comes kind of in various forms. Uh, it says, if you uh, serve others, then be a faithful steward of, of God's grace in its very various forms. And here's the various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. That's a pretty profound thought when you think about all the, the random things that we say to each other, moment by moment, day by day. That we live in some moment of like, the things that I say to these people, these are the very words of God that would bring life. And I want that. I don't want to bring destruction and heartache and discord and all kinds of evil that the evil one wants to bring. I want to bring good things. Speaking as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides. Hey. <laughs> You're, out, you're with your family a lot now, right? And you need to serve them, and you need to live in the strength God provides. Amen? Amen. <laughs> because my family's weird, and I don't have to spend this much time with them usually. Uh, but it's, uh, it is a, a great, great gift to, to figure out how to love the way Christ loves, right? And to put yourself in the challenge is the best way to figure out a new way and a better way to do it. So uh, I encourage you with that. Um, and so all of this is done so that God may be praised through Jesus Christ. That all of this would be done to bring God praise. To Him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. What a really cool uh, opportunity today here to live in some moment of, of not only just trying to not be fearful, trying to not be anxious. There's nothing worse than telling someone who's anxious to just not be anxious, right? Uh, that really doesn't help. Uh, but, but to live in some moment that Peter has given us this list of pray and love and offer hospitality and serve others and recognize that the overall goal is to bring glory to Christ. Uh, we have a great opportunity to grow in our faith and to grow into what it means to uh, be servants of the Most High God and uh, allow the difficult moment we are in to change us and alter who we are. Let me pray for us and then we have uh, one more song that we're going to sing. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for tonight and today and uh, whatever this moment is, it's a moment with you. So whether it happens on Friday night, or Saturday afternoon, or Sunday night, it makes no difference. Because in the end, we, uh, we just want to honor you with our lives. I thank you, Lord, for uh, the, uh, the recognition that, that your great word was written in moments that were difficult moments for people. And so as we enter into difficult moments that we're facing, uh, that we can recognize the, the great advice that Peter has for the church here. And that would be great advice for us. Lord, help us to learn how to pray and to love and to serve and to offer hospitality and to recognize that all this is done to bring you glory. Um, may that be so. In your name I pray. Amen. Well, it's been good to be with you, and we're excited to, uh, to do this today. And, you know, the very first song that we sang was a song of praise and adoration to Jesus and, and how great thou art. And then the second song, It Is Well With My Soul, is a song that provides assurance to each and every one of us. This next song is a song more of nurturing and that God is with us and that he holds us in his hand. And so I'd like to share with you from Psalm 145 as we close. It says, I will extol you, my God and King, and bless your name forever and ever. And every day I will bless you and praise your name forever. For great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. 
One generation shall laud your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. And on the glorious splendor of your majesty and on the wondrous words, I will meditate. The might of your awesome deeds shall be proclaimed and I will declare your greatness. They shall celebrate the fame of your abundant goodness and shall sing aloud of your righteousness. For great is your faithfulness. Let's join together as we sing a great hymn of faith, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Thank you. 